All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the pick. Uh, I like to call it the pick. Uh, you know, uh, Drake likes to call it the six. Well, here in Pickering, it's the pick. Um, my name's Peter Betham Falvey, and I'm, I'm privileged and honored to be the MPP for Pickering Uxbridge and the member for Provincial Parliament, joined by the Premier, my colleagues, uh, Stephen Lecce and Monty McNaughton. Welcome to Pickering. You're welcome to Pickering. By the way, stay a little bit longer. Go buy a hamburger. There's some great shops here, so please do that. And all of you, too. Uh, yeah, a lot of good burgers here. I'd like to start off by thanking uh, Tracy Barrell. Uh, Tracy and her team, the Director of Education, Monique Forster, the Chair of the Board, Jim McCaffrey, uh, the School Trustee, Principal, Principal Divisio, and Mr. Sorbilli, uh, the Technology Education Teacher, for hosting us today here at St. Mary's. And this is a fantastic school, and it's so uplifting. And uh, of course, I'm one of the uh, St. Mary's students who I'm looking at right now. You're working in my uh, constituency office. St. Mary's has been terrific. Uh, providing co-ops. Uh, students have uh, great experience in the constituency office. So I just want to say, go Monarchs. <laughs> I would also like to acknowledge uh, Mayor Kevin Ash from the city of Pickering. Uh, somewhere here. Yeah, there he is. Can't miss him. Uh, congratulations on your election, Mayor. A gathering here today reminded of the importance of education and the significant role it plays in shaping the future of our province. You know, Ontario is a diverse and vibrant province with a rich history and strong future. And we're fortunate to have a Premier who is committed to working tirelessly for the betterment of our communities and our province. I'm a little jealous that he was able to do that uh, smoldering there and punch through. I, but I set the ball really low for you, Premier, there for you to get through. And you did it. You delivered. You got it done. Uh, standing with our Premier is Minister Lecce and Mr. McNaughton, who uh, I know strive every day to bring a promising future to our students. And I really do want to acknowledge both of you gentlemen for the leadership you both play. Incredible leadership in the education sector. Mr. Lecce has been an absolute uh, star reforming the curriculum, investing uh, historic and unprecedented dollars into our education system, leading the charge on child care, delivering child care, increasing the number of spaces. Uh, I just did an announcement, Stephen, two weeks ago at the uh, French school, the Ronald, Ronald Marion, to add, I think, 49 child care spaces to the existing school. Every other week, I feel like I'm here in Pickering doing an announcement with you. So thank you for your leadership uh, right across the province. And of course, uh, Monty McNaughton, who is, uh, along with the Premier and our whole team, transforming uh, all the, the, the labor activity in this province is the thing that keeps me up at night the most is how do we attract, how do we train, and how do we retain labor across the whole province. Couldn't do it without teammates like that under the leadership of the Premier. And with that, I'm going to pass it to our Minister of Education, Stephen Lecce. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. It is wonderful to be here in Pickering. I want to thank you, Peter, for your wonderful leadership and introduction and hospitality to the mayor, the director, the chair, the trustee, everyone, the principal VP, and the students most especially here at St. Mary's. Thank you uh, for leading the way uh, when it comes to building up the skilled trades and the leaders we want in our economy. You know, we want every single student to have a pathway to a good job. That is our aspiration. It's the focus today on creating new and accelerated pathways to the skilled trades. It's about increasing the hands-on learning in the classroom with more co-op, more work placements, and greater opportunities to take apprenticeship in college credits while in high school. And this is exactly what students, what job creators, what parents have called on us to do in our government. And because a principal measurement of our success is how do we get students from the classroom into a good paying job. That's why our government has continuously stepped up and invested in the skilled trades. We have a dual credit program in this province that allows students in high school to take apprenticeship courses, gaining a credit that applies both to their high school diploma and to their certificate of apprenticeship. And I'm proud that under our government, we have seen a 137% increase in students taking skilled trades and technology dual credits since we started in 2018. We have also um, expanded the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program, which allows students to gain credits from co-op placements in the workforce. Students love this program, and it's why we expanded it. We also have the Specialist High Skills Major Program, which allows students to tailor 
There are grade 11 and 12 courses and experiences around one of 19 key economic sectors. It could be for our students in the north specializing in mining to aerospace engineering and manufacturing here in the south. And I'm proud that under our government we have seen a 40% increase in students in the trades and technology within those Schism programs. But, and we know this is success, but we also recognize there's more to do. On International Women's Day, we want to recognize that with us today, we have two incredible students who actually helped Peter Monty and the Premier and I uh, with our welding, Shannon and Sinead. These are amazing champions at St. Mary's that are leading the way to encourage more girls into the skill trades, and for that, we want to thank them. Now, for those who are more academically inclined, for those who are not, our schools are about ensuring everyone can succeed. And today's announcement signals to students and parents those that are more inclined to use their tools or technology, that their sons and daughters have a fantastic roadmap to a job, yes, to home, and to a life of dignity and purpose. And we're doing it together across government, and we couldn't do it without the leadership of my friend, the Minister of Labour and Skills Development, Monty McNaughton. Thank you so much. Well, thank you uh, very much, Minister Lecce. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here in Pickering uh, with our friend, Minister Bethan Falvey, who's such a, a strong voice here for his constituents uh, in Pickering. Uh, everyone here is working hard to attract and train our next generation of skilled trades workers. And as many of you know, there really is no bigger champion in the province of Ontario for the skilled trades than our Premier, Premier Ford. Under his leadership, working together, we're seeing great progress. We're creating a world-leading apprenticeship system. As of January, apprenticeship registrations are 23% higher compared to last year. And as it's International Women's Day today, I should add that registrations for women in the skilled trades were also up 29% year over year. This wouldn't have been possible without us working together as government, labour leaders, employers and educators. But obviously there is still a lot more work to be done. Whether it's construction, landscaping, tool and die, manufacturing and building electric vehicles, we need workers to build at an unprecedented speed. These careers in the skilled trades are fantastic opportunities waiting for our young people. The chance to make six figures with defined pensions and benefits, more than most of those who go to university. To travel or start your own business. To have a job for life and be damn proud of what you build. I'm looking forward to what the Premier is announcing today. In countries like the UK and Germany, young people have completed their apprenticeship by the age of 21. But in Ontario, the average age of an apprentice is 29. We must make it easier for young people to start careers in the trades. This fall, we'll be exploring students starting certain trades after grade 10. We'll be consulting with our trusted partners in the trades, as well as education stakeholders and parents. Together, we will make it easier for young people to reach their full potential and lead purpose-driven lives. As always, we'll continue to put safety first. Our top priority is for every worker to come home safely at the end of their shift and that our workplaces remain the safest in Canada. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, we're helping bring good jobs into reach for young people and making them aware of the unlimited opportunity that's available. Together we're building a stronger Ontario that truly leaves no one behind. Thank you and now I'll turn it over to the biggest champion in Ontario for the skilled trades, Ontario's Premier Doug Ford. Well, th thank you so much, uh, Monty and, and Peter and Stephen. Well, first of all, uh, good morning. It's great to be here at St. Mary's. And uh, boy, we, we did some welding, as, as Monty was saying. We had a lot of fun there. But you, you have champions as, as teachers here and the principal, which I'll name in a minute, and uh, the students especially. So on behalf of Ministers Beth and Falvey, McNaughton and Lecce, I want to thank Principal Divizio. Thank you, uh, Principal, for having us by. And the shop teacher, Vince Cerbelli. And what a, what a shop teacher he is. You know, when we went to school, my favorite uh, teacher was a shop teacher. And I'm sure it's the same way over at St. Mary's. The, the whole team and all the students at St. Mary's Catholic Secondary School, thank you 
for having us here today. I also want to acknowledge Mayor Kevin Ash. It's great to see you, Mayor. You're doing an incredible job. There's a lot of exciting things happening here because of your leadership and, and Peter's. And I just want to thank your team and the council uh, here in Pickering. And it's always great to see our, our tremendous partners from Skills Ontario, Youth Employment Services, our business partners, youth organizations, and friends from our great trade labor unions, including from the Ontario Skilled Trades Alliance, ResCon, Landscape Ontario Horticultural Trades Association, Progressive Contractors Association, and Merit Open Shop Contractors Association of Ontario. Thank you for joining us and for all you do to support our young people to find good paying jobs and rewarding careers. I want to start by wishing everyone here a happy International Women's Day. And I always say at our household with five women, every day is uh, International Women's Day. So I have to give a shout out to my five girls, Carla, Chris, Kayla, Kara, Kyla. So there you go. And to just take a moment to acknowledge the incredible contributions of women to our province. We know that when women succeed, Ontario succeeds. That's why our government is working hard to create the conditions where everyone has the chance to reach their full potential, regardless of their gender. We're taking action to empower women, including investing in programs that help them overcome barriers to enter or re-enter the workforce, to start their own small businesses, or to learn a trade. And it's great to see so many young women here today taking an interest in the skilled trades. So happy International Women's Day to all of you. My friends, there's no secret that Ontario is facing a historic labour shortage, with more than 380,000 jobs going unfilled every single day. And I always say you, we create the, the conditions and the environment for companies to come here and expand, and this is this is what uh, this is what happens. We have 380,000 uh, jobs available. This is a, a really really big challenge for us right now, but it's also an amazing opportunity. So by 2026, one in five job openings in Ontario will be in the skilled trades. These are rewarding jobs as welders, as electricians, as, as child care workers, and the list just continues to go on. These are the jobs that will build Ontario because over the next decade, we're going to need thousands of new skilled construction workers to help build the infrastructure our growing population needs, including highways, transit, schools, hospitals, and of course, new homes. That's why our government is investing over $1.5 billion in our skilled trade strategy, working hand in hand with the labor unions, business groups, and our schools, colleges, and universities to train the skilled workforce our growing economy needs, whether it's upskilling workers, training new ones, or breaking down barriers to get skilled immigrants into the province, we're leaving no stone unturned, and it's all hands on deck. And today, we're pleased to announce our government will soon be making changes that will allow students, starting in grade 11, to transition to a full-time skilled trades apprenticeship program while still earning a high school diploma. This new initiative will help more students enter the skilled trades faster. It will provide more young women and men opportunities for good paying in-demand jobs and rewarding careers. This new pathway will be a game changer for so many students and their families and supports our government's ongoing work to attract more young people into the skilled trades to help build Ontario. And my friends, this is just one of the steps our government is taking to attract more young people to the trades. Led by the great work our Minister uh, Monty McNaughton and Minister Lecce we're working hard to end the stigma around careers in the skilled trades. We've expanded our dual credit program. We're modernizing school curriculum to include mandatory learning about the skilled trades. And last fall, we launched our first ever skilled trades career fairs, giving thousands of students in grades 7 to 12 exposure to 144 trades through interactive exhibitions and hands-on activities. Together, these programs, these initiatives will help educate students 
and their families about the good salaries and stable jobs available to them and will help us train the best skilled workforce in all of North America, the workers to build Ontario. Thank you again for having me here today and our ministers and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. Good morning. Well, Charlie, I think I've addressed this a dozen times. I went to the integrity commissioner, he cleared me, so uh, next question. You haven't addressed whether or not you told the integrity commissioner that people paid $150 to do that. Again, Charlie, well, Charlie, um, I've answered this a hundred times. Not this question. And, and again, I think I said it publicly, so you have your answer, but next question. Thank you. We're here about skilled trades today, Charlie. Hi. Hi, Allison. Um, the appeal court struck down Bill 307, uh, the third party advertising rules. Why are you appealing instead of um, just crafting some new charter compliant legislation like the court ordered? Well, again, we're going to appeal it and uh, see what happens. I uh, personally totally disagree, but you know, that's the court's decision. That's their right. We're going we're gonna to appeal. We've, talked to constitutional lawyers and they were actually floored. A lot of lawyers were floored on that decision, but that's the process, right? So we'll go through the appeal process. The Ontario Autism Coalition was at Queen's Park this week. They yep. said that Minister Fullerton wouldn't meet with them. They said she hasn't really meaningfully met with them since she became minister, nor has she held a press conference to publicly mm -hmm. talk about the program. The ministry won't release the numbers of children receiving funding under the program. Why is the minister and ministry not being more transparent? Well, I think, uh, number one, Dr. Fullerton has done a stellar job in, in her portfolio. We've increased uh, funding to families with children with autism. When we, when we first took office about four and a half years ago, uh, the, the, I think the first week they came up and told us the, the system was bankrupt. And, and that was just our, our first few weeks. We're pouring money into it to help families, children with autism, and we'll do anything we, we can to, to support them and, and, and give them the, the uh, support that they, they need. It's, it's, it's very challenging on these families, and uh, to be very frank, my heart breaks for them. Hi, Premier. It's Chris Hi. Rochelle from the Toronto Hi. Star. Hi, Chris. I wanted to ask you about the Toronto mayor's race, and yeah. you know, what do you feel about the quality of candidates so far? Well, I I don't think you know we have to see everyone that's going to be going into the the race, and I look forward to working with anyone. Uh, whoever gets elected, we'll work with them. Um, and I, I think a, a big issue is what I'm hearing out there is safety, safe communities, safe subways. Uh, safe transit, that's, that's a big issue in, in Toronto right now, but you also have to be fiscally responsible. So well, let's see what happens. Whoever wins, I'll, I'll, work, uh, I'll work with them like I do all the time. Are you heartened to see that a former PC candidate, Mark Sanders, is putting his name out there and is a potential candidate? Well, well let's see if he's putting his name out there. Let's see if he's going to announce. Uh, I think the world of uh, uh, a lot of the candies, but, uh, you know, Chief uh, Saunders did a great job as police chief. And if he goes in, that, that's good. I, I think that's great. A good field of candidates is always healthy uh, for the people to decide on. And let's see, what, let's see what happens. Hi, Premier. It's Cynthia Mulligan from City News. Hi, Cynthia. I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. It has been a while. Yeah. My 
first question is from my colleague, Nick Westall, who has been yeah. doing a lot of work on the Eglinton Crosstown, even had FOIs. Yeah. There is no transparency from your government as to what the heck is going on with the Eglinton Crosstown. It's way behind yeah. schedule. There's no date as to when it will be completed, and there's no explanation as to what the problem is. And Nick's FOI found that people in mm -hmm. Caroline Mulroney's office wanted to give more explanation, but that was quashed. So why yeah. is there no transparency, and well, what is the problem with the Eglinton Crosstown? Well, first of all, thanks for that question, Cynthia. And as you know, we inherited a, quite a mess on the Eglinton Crosstown, but we've had time to move forward and, and get it fixed, and we're working with Metrolinx, we're working with Phil Verster and the Minister of Transportation, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you the good news on Eglinton. So the new line, Eglinton West, uh, that's, that's heading out uh, close to the airport, they're actually four weeks ahead of schedule, they're on time, on budget. Uh, we're, we're building the largest transit system in North America, no matter if it's a Young Extension or the Scarborough Line or the Great Ontario Line and the Eglinton West. Um, but we're, we're on to that. We want to get that uh, Eglinton Crosstown open as quickly as possible. You know, Cynthia, I remember we were negotiating when Rob was mayor. Uh, that's how long ago that was. And... You know, sure, they've had a bump in the road, but we're doing great work right across the city, uh, building largest uh, project in North America right now. But I, I hear you. I'm not dismissing that, Cynthia, at all. I want it open just as uh, quickly as, as everyone else. Okay, I want to switch to the FAO report that yes. was released at 9 o'clock this morning. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a fairly uh, concerning report because it's suggesting even though you have pledged, and I know you have pledged billions yep. more in healthcare spend, spending on infrastructure, that it's not going to be enough, that you're mm -hmm. going to be $21 billion short. Mm -hmm. And I will give you that I know that this is a problem that's been building for decades. Yep. But it is concluding that you're, you're $21 billion short and you're still going to be with less capacity than will be required. What do you say yeah, about Well, th thanks so much for that, Cynthia. And before, I'll answer, then I'll pass over to my finance ma minister. The FAO, you know, they only take a snapshot in time. And it, I guess it's really frustrating to ourselves and the finance minister. Uh, they don't include the health transfers. Uh, and, and they aren't including any additional money that's going forward. But I'll, I'll tell you what we, we are doing. Um, since we've taken office, while well, the FAO report said in 14 years under the Liberal government, they created 830 beds. In three years, we've created 3,500 beds. We're adding an additional 3,000 beds. We're putting uh, on the infrastructure side, as you were saying, we're putting 50 uh, new additions or new hospitals across the province. We've hired 60 or registered uh, 60,000 new nurses since the 2018. Those are pretty staggering numbers. We're hiring 8,000 new doctors. Uh, last year alone, the College of Nurses put this out. It was a record uh, in Ontario, bringing on 12,000 uh, more nurses. And the great thing is we have 30,000 um, nurses in our colleges and universities. We've really made some real great announcements over the last, uh, you know, few weeks about uh, the prescriptions. Uh, rather than, you know, you, have, you need a prescription filled, rather than waiting three or four days to get the doctor and get a prescription, you know, we've seen 100,000 people uh, go into the pharmacies and fill their prescriptions. The Learn and Stay program to get more nurses that were paying for their tuition if you work in a rural area. Um, and, and there's just so many other areas. But this is the reason, uh, Cynthia, and th thank you for mentioning this. This is the reason I've been shouting at the, at the top of the hill about we need the federal government to step up and we sign the deal and it's a great down payment. But it's not sustainable. As, as we're spending, uh, folks, $75 billion, there's another increase coming in health care. We've increased it by $14 billion. We're pouring money into the health care system. We gave the nurses a $5,000 bonus last year. We gave the PSWs a $3 uh, increase. So we're, we're throwing everything in the kitchen sink at health care. But this is the reason 
We need to do things differently. This is the reason we got to get caught up on the backlog surgeries. This is the reason that we need community uh, surgical clinics to uh, knock down the 203,000. Just imagine people in, with cataracts waiting, uh, waiting for a year or two years until they can get proper vision. Imagine someone, your loved one, needs a hip replacement. They're waiting a year, year and a half for a hip replacement or a knee replacement. Our goal is as we get everything moving forward in the years to come, to deliver knees, hips, cataracts, one of the quickest in, in the country. That's our goal, but I'll pass it over uh, to the finance minister. Thanks for that question. Well, thank you, thank you, Premier. Uh, boy, that's good. Wait, uh, you're doing some incredible work there. I just uh, <laughs> wish I had my notepad. Um, Look, uh, the FAO's job is to speculate about the future, and uh, as the Premier says, just take a look at the evidence. Just like, take a look at what we're doing. Unprecedented historic increases in, uh, in health care to pay for everything that the Premier just said, because we did inherit a couple of decades of, as Cynthia mentioned, uh, uh, an infrastructure and a people deficit in our health care system. Uh, you know, in my job is to actually make sure we fund those priorities. We've seen the health care budget go up by over $5 billion last year. We're going to continue. We're going to continue. So, you know, the FAA's job is to speculate on the future and maybe about where are those contingencies go. I wouldn't be doing my job as finance minister if I didn't have contingencies. Premier, if I didn't have contingencies uh, before the pandemic, you know, when you said, I want to spare no expense, uh, then I wouldn't be doing my job if I'd say, Minister, uh, Premier, I don't have enough money. So we're making sure that the funding is there because that's our top priority, not only the physical health care infrastructure, but the human health care uh, resources that are necessary because where they're going to work. And I'll just end by saying, you know, you talked about a, a bunch of things and getting it done. And Cynthia, you know, we're here in Durham. We're redeveloping the Bowmanville Hospital. We're putting a, a new hospital up in Uxbridge. We put a long-term care facility right beside the Ajax Pickering Hospital. The Premier said, can we get one done? 320 beds. And we said, yeah. And he said, how long will it take? And the answer was eight years to build it. We got it done because he said, I want it done faster than that. We got it done in 13 months. We got 320 modern long-term care beds right beside the Ajax Pickering Hospital. We put more mental health and addiction upgraded beds in the Ajax Pickering Hospital. So um, I would just say, as, you, hmm? as, a, as, a as of right, you know, if you're a, a doctor in BC and you want to work here or you're a nurse in, uh, in Nova Scotia and you come here, you can work here. You know, we're leading the way in Canada. And I just want to give a shout out again to the Premier on the Canada Health Transfer. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's not as much as I would have liked for Canada if, from the transfer. We, we want a lot more. But, you know, we could, we could talk about it for years, but at the end of the day, people want to get their cataract surgery. They, they, there's acute care uh, that we have to fund. There is home and community care, something I'm very passionate about. Mental health and addiction care. Care, mental health and addiction in the community. There's so much supportive housing. There's so much more we have to do. So rather than talk about it for a couple of years, the Premier said, let's get, let's get all the Premiers, let's move this forward, let's get something done so we can continue to support and invest in health care. Hi, Premier. Siobhan Hi. Morris with CTV News. Hey, Siobhan. How are you doing? Good. Um, similar yeah. question. The yeah. FAO did also flag that despite all the announcements your government has made, all those new, new nurses and PSWs online, the, the government's still going to be short some 33,000 people in order to make all the health, new health care investments work. How do you propose to fill that gap, or do you need to revise what you've promised to, to make everything work? Yeah, well, thanks for that, uh, Siobhan. We, we have 30,000 uh, students and colleges and, and universities ready to fill the, the positions. Uh, foreign, uh, foreign nurses that are coming in here with credentials are going to be coming on board. And also, uh, as, as, uh, as the minister mentioned, we're, we're able to attract nurses from all over the country now, and I'm sure the other provinces are going to take our lead on that. But we're really going to make sure that we're going to fill the pipeline with as many uh, students that want to become nurses and give back to the community and the healthcare uh, situation. But this is the reason I kept saying over and over again, uh, we can't do it alone. We need the federal government to support us 
And again, I thank the government, uh, the federal government, for the down payment. Uh, we look forward to continuing to work with them along with the other uh, premiers. And we're, we're just going to keep uh, pouring resources, HHR, Health Human Resources, into the health system. And we're pouring unprecedented amount of money. It's, it's billions. And uh, we're just going to keep working on it. But we can't keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. We're going to do things differently with the advice of the OHA, the OMA, the CEOs of the hospitals, healthcare workers, and uh, we'll make the appropriate changes to deliver a more efficient system. You've talked about this deal with the federal government, the, the bilateral yes. one and the increase in the Canada health transfer as being yep. a down payment. Are you suggesting yep. that you're going to be able to squeeze more money out of the feds in the, over the life of that 10-year agreement? Well, I think we're going to work with them uh, on so many different projects, and they've been really, really good partners. As I've, I've mentioned to the, the PM, I can't remember in over 30 years in politics the two levels of government working closer together than, than we have. And I'm, you know, I'm just not into this political stripes. I, I'm just not. And don't get me wrong, I'm very proud to be the leader of the PC party. But we'll work with anyone to, to make sure that we work on the child care, which we did, the EV uh, industry and the sector becoming a, a leader there, critical minerals, life sciences, and uh, health care deals, the pandemic deals, uh, and the list just keeps going on. So I'm very grateful for the, the relationship we have uh, with the federal government working hand in hand. This will be the last question. I report Martin Trainer, CBC News. Uh, you have, I'm sticking with uh, health care. You have yes. mentioned uh, how much you're putting into health care, but in 2018 you promised an end to hallway medicine. The yes. FAO report shows that for the most recent year, there were more patients in hospital hallways than ever. So when, with all these in investments, when will that end? Yeah, good, good point. You know, we, we went through, obviously, a worldwide crisis with the pandemic for well in excess of over two years. It really put pressure on the system. But we feel that uh, we're moving in the right direction. And in every decision that we make, we always consult with the healthcare experts. But we're going to make sure we run the, the most efficient healthcare system uh, anywhere in, in North America by doing things differently, uh, by investing into HHR, investing into brand new hospitals, investing into another 3,000 beds over and on top of the 3,500 beds that uh, we have. And I, I think that will alleviate uh, a lot of the problems. But a great question because I believe in continuous improvement. Uh, you never sit back. You constantly look at new ways of delivering services and, and funding it. But we're, again, um, there's no government in the history of this province that has put more funding into health care than, than we have. But thank you for that question there. Right. And just to follow up here. Yeah, sure. So all this skills training is great for 2026. Yes. But daycare operators are telling us now that there's an incredible difficulty in hiring staff. With all this shortage of early daycare uh, childhood educators, um, how will that affect your ability to deliver a 10-day a day, $10 a day child care program? Yeah, so that, that's a great question for Minister Lecce, which I'm going to uh, ask to come up here, and then Mr. McNaughton on the, on the training side, because it's really important. We made this deal with the federal government, and uh, I think we're, we're moving uh, forward on it in a, a fairly good way, but uh, I'll hand it over to Minister Lecce. Uh, well, thank you for the question. I think, um, first of all, we are proud that as of this January 1st that our government uh, delivered a 50% reduction in child care for working parents in this province. I mean, we're talking about eight to $12,000 per child per year. That's a monumental step forward in affordability. And many parents have said to us, particularly women who were excluded from the economy because it was so expensive to raise a child in the first place. So we have a commitment. We are delivering on that commitment of affordability, 50% reduction as of January 1, in addition to making sure we build 86,000 spaces, uh, 56,000 of which we are committed, 46,000 of which we're committed to build new. And part of that commitment is underscored by having the right staff in place. Just this past December, uh, I stood with... Um, 
um, my colleagues to announce the expansion of the dual credit program for early childhood educators. Literally designed to fix the problem you cite, which is staffing shortages that could be projected as demand rises for affordable childcare, $10 a day dot childcare by year 2025, 26. We're going to need more people because we're going to have more demand for it. It's a good problem to have, but we are acting on uh, our plan to expand the amount of child care, early childhood educators within our uh, child care settings. We've expanded dual credit. And just to be clear what that means, we've now allowed 400 additional students uh, to take a dual credit course. While they're in high school, they get to take a course that, that applies and counts towards their graduation in high school and within their apprenticeship or college diploma. So it's like a two-for-one deal. Kids love this program. It accelerates their path. It gets them, out of the, uh, gets them to the finish line quicker. And we're working with the College of um, Early Childhood Educators to expedite interprovincial. We want more people from across Canada to know that there's a safe, great place to work in this province. Uh, and just frankly, just broadly about today's announcement, how it intersects with the skilled trades, it's about ensuring that students in high school ultimately have a more accelerated path to get a job. There are some kids that they may not be in our high school system. Uh, without shop classes and skilled trades opportunities. It is for those kids especially that this pipeline directly into the skilled trades is going to give them access to a job, uh, a diploma, and the dignity that comes with employment. And we have a plan to build houses for them, for the kids we just met with. We want them to achieve home ownership and have a life of purpose in this country. So thank you. I'll turn it over to Minister McNaughton. Thanks. We're good. Okay, well, thank you so much, St. Mary's, and thank you to the team. You're doing an incredible job, and we're very, very grateful. And I've got to give a shout-out to the, the teachers right across Ontario. Thank you for everything you do. I couldn't do your job, so we're very, very grateful. So, again, God bless, and have a, have a great week. Thank you. Thank you.